Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Scouting 5, recapping scouting news from around the world for the week of January 16th, 2023. I'm Scouter Ken, and I am once again recording from St. Albert, Alberta. I know we talked last year about how Camp Bing had been not shut down permanently, but certainly access to it had been restricted. That was in one Scouting 5 episode or another. I know I was doing them infrequently towards the end of 2022. Well, now it seems that there's a fundraising campaign underway to reopen the camp amidst the ongoing legal dispute over the use of the property. Quoting the Coast Reporter, A fundraising campaign has been launched to reopen Camp Bing, even as the storied camp remains mired in a legal dispute involving competing claims about property ownership. Scout Properties, incorporated in British Columbia and the Yukon Territory, created a GoFundMe page on December 11th with the stated goal of raising $75,000 to reopen the camp this year and offset the usual camp expenses such as utilities, groundskeeping, insurance, repairs, security, and maintenance. Keith Martin, director and former chair of the Board of Scout Properties, told the Coast reporter that the charity plans to reopen camping in 2023 regardless of whether the fundraising goal is achieved. Scout Properties, whose stated mandate is to purchase, own, and hold real estate and property for Scouts Canada and similar groups, has taken the unprecedented step of attempting to assume operational control of the property after it claims to have ended Scouts Canada's tenancy on December 9th, which Scouts Canada disputes. Martin said the camp's ongoing operational closure due in part to maintenance costs and the departure of a long-standing resident caretaker with no apparent planned replacement factored into the very difficult decision to take on the role of camp operator and to shut out Scouts Canada. I'm kind of of two minds about this because on the one hand, I do really want to see Scout Properties continue to exist. And I think I talked about that a little bit in the last episode where I mentioned camping and talked about how, you know, like the guides around here seem to be doing really, really well maintaining their properties. And I know out east there are some well-maintained Scout Properties, but out here in the west we're losing them really, really fast. And it would be nice to arrest that if at all we can to stop that loss of places where Scouts can go places that are held by Scouts Canada. It's not that we lack for other places to go camping, but it's nice to actually, you know, have things that are kind of set aside for Scouts to use. And we are losing those places out here. At the same time, doing it in ways that's going to get you into legal hot water with Scouts Canada, I don't know if I can get behind. Moving on to some international news, of course, the World Scout Jamboree 2023 is taking place in South Korea this year. And some intrepid Scout leaders have decided that they are going to get there by cycling. Quoting Scout.org. Joining the 25th World Scout Jamboree 2023 without taking a plane. This is the goal of Project La Cycle de Sea. Florian Coupe, Antonin Savoy, and Pierre Lesourde will cycle the 15,000 kilometers between France and the Republic of Korea to join the 25th World Scout Jamboree. 2023. On their journey, they will meet scouts to promote peace and international friendship. The three scout leaders will join the biggest scout event in the world via bicycle. Yes, you read it right. On January 3rd, 2023, they started pedaling from Moisson, France, where the World Scout Jamboree took place in 1947, and started their adventure. In eight months, they will ride through Europe, the Caucasus, and Asia. They will take three boats to cross the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, and from China to the Republic of Korea, their final destination. Every month, they will cycle for 20 days, covering 80 kilometers per day. The other 10 days, depending on the month, they will rest, meet local scouts, and share on their social media profiles the way they live scouting and what they want to tell the world. And, of course, if someone feels motivated to join them for two or three days, or all the way until the end, they are more than welcome to do so. It's kind of a really cool thing. I wish them luck. I mean, some of the territories that they are going to be crossing are mm, not necessarily the safest territories in the world, though I imagine they have researched and chosen a route in part based on, you know, the relative safety of it. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. I used to be such an avid cyclist back in the day. So it would be like, this would be an awesome, awesome trip to do. Though, you know, I don't think I could set aside <laughs> so many months as that. And it seems that they're each riding for somebody. Like, you know, they're kind of dedicating their rides to different people. So again, just really, really awesome and really an opportunity for them to meet with scouts from just, you know, a whole big chunk of the world. Meanwhile. Some interesting news for Polish scouts and guides. Their combined association, the Polish Scouting and Guiding Association, also known as ZHP, has evidently been awarded the EESC Civil Society Prize for 2022. Quoting Scout.org again, The Polish Scouting and Guiding Association, ZHP, 
has been awarded the Civil Society Prize 2022 by the European Economic and Social Committee. ZHP was recognized for the humanitarian aid it provided across the country to support Ukrainians at six border crossings and in 147 local aid centers. Scouts provided assistance to every third refugee out of approximately 3 million Ukrainians. Polish Scouts and Guides were awarded for mobilizing the entirety of the organization to help Ukrainians jointly and comprehensively. At border crossings, ZHP Scouts and Guides provided information, support, and psychological assistance to people, as well as directing them to safe areas. In addition, ZHP collected over 127 tons of humanitarian aid and transported it to Ukraine. Over 1.5 million refugees received scouting support in the first month of the war, and one in five children from Ukraine participated in scouting activities in Poland. During the first three months of supporting refugees, over 4,000 ZHP scouts over the age of 16 were involved. In addition, nearly 6,000 Ukrainian children participated in scout camps from June to August, where they experienced physical, mental, and emotional rest. In this way, they were able to integrate in an easier way to their new environment. That's a really cool undertaking. And keeping on the theme of scouting and peace and support for Ukraine, scouts have evidently, or at least over the end of 2022, were passing around the peace light, quoting scout.org. Every, or for over 20 years, not every 20 years, for over 20 years, every December, scouts in Europe have passed the peace light across Europe as a symbol of peace, hope, and unity for everyone. The peace light is a continuously burning flame originating from the grotto at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem that scouts have been visiting to light their lanterns and spread the flame to other scouts. After weeks of planning and coordination, the peace light is then flown to Vienna by Austrian scouts, where it is celebrated and shared with delegations across Europe. Keeping with the tradition, this year, 1,300 scout delegations gathered at the peace light ceremony in Vienna to receive the symbolic flame. They were then transferred back to their countries by land, where they met other scouts eager to light their own lanterns, spreading unity across the continent. More scout delegations have participated in this act of peace this year, showing their solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Even scout groups from Ukraine managed to reach Vienna to take part in the ceremony. They received the peace light to take back home to their communities as a symbol of hope for a peaceful future. Sharing this sentiment, scouts across Europe ensured the peace light reached Ukrainian refugees in their respective countries, passing the message of support, compassion, and hope. I think it's really, really cool that like a single, admittedly very large, but still a single candle lit in Bethlehem can then go on to light thousands and thousands of candles across all of Europe and even the world. And one more story to close out, again from Scout.org. Nine New Year's Resolution Ideas for Scouts. I won't quote the whole article, because it's, as you can imagine, fairly long. But let's just quickly kind of go over the nine resolutions themselves, because they're all pretty excellent. Make a friend from another country. That's the first one. Don't even have to leave your own country to do this. I mean, obviously, I talk... I have talked on the podcast before about ways that, you know, I do this. If I have to travel for work, I'll reach out to scout groups where I'm going and try and meet up with them, even if they're other Canadian scout groups or American or Irish or whatever. But you don't even have to leave your own country to meet somebody from another country, right? You can reach out on social media. You can take part in Jamboree on the internet. Lots of options available to you. You can go to a Jamboree too. Number two, get creative and upcycle your clothes. I mean, if they're in good shape still. The shirt I'm wearing right now has holes in the arms, so it wouldn't exactly be great for donation. But if you have clothing that is in good condition that you just don't wear anymore, I mean, upcycle it. Pass it along. It prevents waste and, you know, it can benefit someone in need who just, you know, needs some good clothes for not a lot of money or free. Number three, be present and benefit from less screen time. This one I'm actually going to quote. Believe it or not, excessive screen time can have serious effects on our mental and physical health, including sleeplessness, anxiety, eye strain, and more. Plus, we've all been caught doom-scrolling from time to time, so we know smartphones and tablets can be a major time drain. Commit yourself to be more mindful with your devices and try tracking and reducing your screen time. Use your newfound minutes or hours to be more present with friends or family, be more active outdoors, or take on a new project you've been saying you have no time for. I highly recommend taking advantage of the controls on both Apple and Android that, you know, allow you to time out your ability to use certain apps after you've used them for a set duration. It actually does make a difference. And prune your notifications. That's the other thing. You know, one of the easiest ways to step into managing your screen time is like just be absolutely brutal in pruning back your notifications. Do not let every app put up a badge. Do not let every app put up a notification banner. Go through your notifications, turn off notifications for apps or pair them back to, you know, as much as you can. Um, Because both within app settings and in your phone settings. Because the less you're getting notified, the less you're going to feel the need to engage. It helps. Right, back to the list. Number four, create an epic pioneering project. Um, 
you know, lash yourself a fort together in the backyard or go a little bigger. Number five, be an earth friendly consumer. This one is maybe worth quoting again. So it can be challenging to be a responsible consumer in many places, but we all know awareness is the first step, right? So get started by researching the supply chain of the brands of, of three of the brands of items you've bought the most last year. This means trying to understand more about how they're made, who makes them and under what conditions, where they come from and how they get to you. With that information, you'll be empowered to make better decisions about what you buy this year. Maybe you can switch one or two brands to more eco or worker-friendly alternatives and tell your friends about them. Okay, point six, learn another language if you have the skill for it. Seven, introduce someone new to scouting. Absolutely. I would also say if you know people who want to volunteer, maybe encourage them to step up. Eight, share a safety skill. You learn a lot of those in scouting. And nine, share scouting videos and photos. Spread the word. Put it out there. But, you know, obviously, in a way that's safe and mindful of people's preferences as to whether or not, you know, they want to appear on social media or in photography or anything like that. It's a good list. It's at scout.org. Make sure there's a link in the show notes. And that is all the news I have for you this week. Thank you again for listening. Here's to a great 2023. Happy New Year. And until next time, be prepared. Be prepared.